Radio na dotek. Na dotek. Well then we would like uh, we would appreciate that you uh, share with us and explain how do you see the whole situation with the disinformation about about this particular case because uh, we actually kind of used to uh, that Russia uh, is uh, preparing uh, um, uh, to do something and they start from media uh, coverage uh, then followed by some accident that they um, blame Ukraine Uh, in and then uh, and then they again uh, um, uh, multiply the effect by uh, further disinformation uh, and uh, only then Ukraine and others the partners they have to consider how should we change uh, the uh, world public opinion already affected by uh, uh, powerful Russian campaigns so we were All, we, we used to always be in this uh, uh, shape uh, of uh, uh, catching up with uh, with what Russia has done in, in information um, uh, attacks. Uh, now you say that uh, this time this time uh, the uh, UN Security Council they were able to uh, bring correction to um, the, the, this campaign that Russia has been, Uh, delivering and spreading was it effective and uh, can we s- and of course uh, the International Atomic Agency is also part of the the security structure of United Nations that means uh, they they must have embraced uh, uh, what the Security Council has come up with uh, can we say that um, uh, the ice has the informational ice around Ukraine has melted down somewhat uh, or uh, where we are Well, I think we have moved a step forward, but we're not. Uh, it's not a satisfactory situation yet. Uh, first of all, I share uh, your uh, analysis that it is possible that the disinformation campaign around the, the drone attacks by by Russia is a way, possibly, to create an atmosphere in which they can later blame or try to blame Ukraine for a possible nuclear incident at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, that they will have created. So uh, that's the reason why it's so important uh, now to, to stop this disinformation, because this disinformation in itself is very dangerous and is creating a risk for uh, nuclear sabotage by Russia. So that that's... This, there's a lot at stake. This disinformation is very dangerous, in our opinion. Uh, secondly, if we look at the success or not of, of Russia in this disinformation campaign, I think in the first phase they were very well prepared when uh, those attacks happened uh, with their information uh, to the global media including staging IEA inspectors to observe uh, Russian uh, military to take down a drone. So that was most likely a staged uh, situation. So it was all very well prepared and to some extent, unfortunately, successful in the global media. That's why it was so important to push back. Um, so. Regarding the International Atomic Energy Agency, their role at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant has been problematic from the beginning of their mission. Also on this uh, drone attack, they have uh, made uh, a call on both sides to uh, restrain from uh, damaging the nuclear power plant. And for Russia, this is very convenient. The communication from the IEA, which seems to be neutral, but in a conflict, uh, and such a formally neutral position is obviously not neutral. It, it, it is used by Russia um, and uh, their, their strategy uh, to at least create doubts about maybe it, there is something about, about Ukraine being involved in this. I think this communication strategy is not to prove it's Ukraine, it's just creating a doubt. And the EPA is unfortunately 
supporting that Russian communication strategy. And that is very dangerous. Mm-hmm. And finally, what was very important in the Security Council was the, the kind of attack or pressure from the Russian ambassador on the IEA, even though they should be happy with the IEA's role, um, still they did put into question the IEA's presence at the nuclear power plant if they would not be more explicit in blaming Ukraine being responsible for it. So it's clearly that they are putting some pressure on, on the IEA to make sure that the IEA stays in line with their communication strategy. Radio Nadotek. Nadotek.